The coronavirus pandemic has brought renewed attention to infectious diseases, especially figuring out ways to fight them and prevent them from reaching people in the first place. So our James Longman went along with some of these experts as part of a National Geographic special called Virus Hunters. Here's a sneak peek. Landing in Liberia is like landing on a different planet. It's definitely unnerving to travel during coronavirus. I mean, you've got all these people in their protective gear. You've got masks and visors, people with forms shouting orders at you. So this is it. We've just got to Liberia. Chris has made it through as well. <laughs> Finally. Liberia was ground zero for the Ebola outbreak and a place researchers are looking for the source of the next pandemic. If people are coming into contact with bats in this rainforest, they could be exposed to a new strain of Ebola or another virus. So this is something the government of Liberia takes very seriously. Okay, yeah. The animals coming from this side. Moses is a ranger whose job it is to stop poachers. He and his team are our first line of defense. So we're walking along this game trail, and we're not sure what we're going to find. You're standing at this abandoned mine, and you can only see maybe two or three meters in before it's entirely black. But in the kind of haze, you can see the kind of decrepit old bits of previous mining industry, and overwhelmingly, the squawk of all these bats. Their wings beating in the darkness. Oh, you can hear them. And do you know what kind of species are inside? This step is the fruit bat. And so what we're doing here is basically just checking to see if there's any signs of hunting. Yes. So you guys are stopping people from coming here. That's your job. Yeah, we stopped them. Exactly. Okay. Masks on? Yep. Okay. Masks on. Oh, my gosh. Okay. All right, let's check it out. I'm gonna slow it. Yeah. So you can see them right here. Whoa, wow. So there's an entire uh, colony in here. Yeah. This is the first time in my life I've been in a bat cave with bats flying around my head, but also in the knowledge that bats contain viruses that are dangerous to humans, and especially in places like Liberia, where we know Ebola came from, or all kinds of other viruses that we don't yet know about. So it really was kind of quite unnerving. Oh, wow. It was a relief to have Chris nearby, who was kind of quite relaxed about the whole thing. For me, because I'm a complete wildlife geek, I think that this is one of the most beautiful things that I've seen, even though I know that there is this potential risk. And people want these bats, right, Chris? I mean, these are valuable. In many places, these are a preferred food item where people will pay almost a premium price for something. So this would be a prime hunting ground for someone to come in here and just collect a whole bunch. OK, and so if you came in here as like your average poacher, you're not wearing a mask, and there's no real protection, and you could easily pick up any kind of it. This is the exact type of almost transmission scenario where you are getting aerosolized urine, aerosolized uh, feces, but also if you're killing the bats, you're then exposed directly to their blood as well. Wow. Can we walk in a little bit? Yes, let's yeah. walk in a little bit. Wow, it just keeps going. This is absolutely insane. A lot of the old iron ore processing equipment, I'm guessing, is that right? Is and you guys, you're look, what are you looking for? What have you found? What, Moses, what is that? This is a trap wire. It's for the, the animals in the forest. It was prepared by a hunter. So it means someone brought in here. So a poacher came in here and, and yeah. set that up? Yes, exactly, yes. Moses and his team find this trap, which seems to suggest that humans have been inside. So you have hunters who are staying in this cave night after night, being exposed to bat feces, bat urine, bat bites. 
There's actually horseshoe bats and a type of fruit bat. Horseshoe bats are known to be related potentially to COVID and also to Ebola. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. And we go further and further back into the depths of the cave. And Moses looks down, and he actually sees a whole host of dead bats on the ground. You can see the, the dead one. This is the dead bat. Wow. This is insane. There are many, many, many on this. You can see this, the younger one. This is a baby. Yeah. Oh, my God. This one is probably a juvenile or sub-adult. This one's definitely a juvenile. So what caused this one to die? So you almost wonder if there was some sort of disease that spread through this community of bats. It would certainly explain why you have a variety of different age classes of bats that are all dead in the exact same spot. It feels like this is something that's really important to understand. Wow. And Chris is fascinated by this. And it could be that these bats have died of some kind of virus. It really does feel like we're in a front line of something unknown. Young bats should not be dying, basically. Not like this. And I think, obviously, the issue is, if there's a poacher in here, and there's a dead bat, and there's blood or whatever, right? So that's yep. a problem. So there's probably some sort of disease, exactly. Bats were known to be the reservoir of Ebola. It also transmitted to other types of animals, and then was transmitted to humans. This is the exact way that a new deadly virus could start. James Longman joins us now from Belgium, the heart of Europe's current COVID crisis. James, in your travels for this new special set to air on our partners, Nat Geo, what was the most surprising thing that you learned about COVID and, and other potential viruses? Lindsay, you know what? I think the thing I found most surprising is how comparatively lightly we may have got off with coronavirus. Now, that might sound shocking. Of course, people's lives have been ruined by this virus, but there are so many others out there. In fact, there is an almost infinite number of viruses, and coronavirus, whilst very contagious, is not as deadly as it could have been. And that's why we went to parts of the world to find viruses that have broken out uh, and really killed a great many more people, like, for example, uh, Liberia in West Africa. Africa where Ebola broke out. You know, scientists have been warning for years about the potential of more pandemics. They've been breaking out, in fact, with more frequency. But things like Ebola don't spread as quickly, although they are really, really dangerous. And I was in that cave with bats flying around over my head, many of whom would have had coronavirus, possibly also Ebola. I've got to tell you, it was a little bit of a scary place to be. But it was fascinating because we learned so much about bats themselves. And we're getting close to Halloween. People often kind of vilify bats, but really bats are just a very good vector for viruses. There are something like 1,800 species of them. Uh, they've been around a long time, and they've got an incredibly good immune system. There's a lot to learn from these bats, and that's why these researchers are on the front line. I was so inspired by them, putting themselves at risk, finding out what we can from these animals to make sure that when the next pandemic hits, and it is a when, it's not an if, they'll be prepared. Lindsay? And what can you tell us about the risk of these new viruses here in, right here in the United States? Well, that is also fascinating. We went out with a ranger in Wisconsin. Uh, hunting is a huge part of life in the Midwest. In Wisconsin, in fact, there are something like 400,000 deer that are harvested every year alone. But they have diseases, CWD, chronic wasting disease. It hasn't jumped to humans, but it's part of a family of diseases that do affect humans. And these rangers go out to try to make sure that they can keep this disease under wraps. So if it does jump from the deer to humans, they'll know. But CWD affects deer in approximately half the states in America. So it is a really serious problem. The other big issue is industrial farming. You know, the American appetite for meat and dairy products is huge, and it's only getting bigger. The risk is growing with the appetite growing. So we went to a federal facility in Iowa, absolutely fascinating, where they screen all these animals. H1N1 pig flu broke out in 2009 in the United States. And it's considered a national risk uh, by, by Homeland Security in the United States. The possibility of a homegrown pandemic 
pandemic in the United States. And so industrial farming, another big flashpoint. The possibility of a pandemic arising from anywhere in the world is just around the corner, and that is why this work is so important. Lindsay? Really some impactful work that you're doing along with the scientist, James, and, and I'm also in awe of your courage as well. Our thanks to you. And be sure to watch the one-hour special event, Virus Hunters, premiering this Sunday night at 9, 8 central on National Geographic and later streaming on Disney+. Plus. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.